Hi folks, welcome to Time to Talk with Gary Mulvaney. Just had a cracking chat to Gary Mulvaney, Gary Mulvaney dog trainer in fact, um, about dogs and how he got into dogs and why dog training. He's had such a rich, uh, rich life. It's been wonderful to talk to him. So I hope you enjoy the next hour with Gary and thanks for listening. Take care, stay safe. Bye bye. Hi Gary, welcome to Time to Talk. I'm so happy to have you on the podcast. Actually, um, you, you just—I I found you so interesting over the years. I've known you for years. I find you so interesting over the years, but you make me laugh. So um, we're now going to have a really serious talk after saying that on one. <laughs> we'll try. We'll try. So um, Gary Mulvaney, dog trainer, is a business, and I've known you as the dog trainer for quite a few years, but. That wasn't always the case, was it? So would you like to give me a little bit of um, history of you? Because I find that you've got a really, really fascinating um, backstory. And I just sit there when we've talked in the past, like, oh my God, you did that. And, oh, did you do this? And you shared a photo on Facebook not so long ago um, when you were standing outside of that little, is it called a sentry box? At the Tower of London, yeah. At the Tower of London. So, um, how long ago was that? That was 80s. Put a bit of beef on since then. Um, that was the, the photo we're talking about is the Tower of London, uh -huh. um, which is one of my favourite guards. Right, I was in the Irish Guards, 1st Battalion Irish Guards, from um, about 81 to about 87. Um, which is military and ceremonial as well. So. Okay, and I get confused between... Um, now, I always call that big furry thing that's, that sits on top of your head. I keep calling that a beef eater, but that's not a beef eater, is it? The no. beef eaters, they're the, they're the flat ones that do the tours in the Tower of London, aren't they? That, that's right. The beef, beef eaters are, are, are extremely long-serving regimental or ex-regimental soldiers that have served in the, the uh, services could be either th all three these days um, and they mainly around the Tower of London um, the, the big hat uh, that you're talking about is called a burskin commonly known in the 80s as a busby, busby. the busby um, yeah it's actually a burskin so okay was it, are they really heavy the look like the way a ton they they are the, well they can be heavy because it it, it 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 is what it is it's a lot of fur on top of a um is it really banded, bear skin? it's what is it a real bear skin no not these days i think the officers still use or used to use real bear skins but ours were synthetic um, oh. at some point but it's it's basically a leather band with cane inside um and with the with the chin strap um our regiment had a plume, which was um, the colour of the regiment, which was blue. Uh -huh. so. Wow, because I, I saw the photo and it just looked amazing. So um, why why the Irish Gods? Why not something else? Because I was in the Army Cadets, and I can remember we had lots of different, like different, I was in D Company in, uh, in the North East when I was a kid, and um, we had lots of different... Uh, companies and they all did different things they all specialised in different things so why did you join why the Irish Gods why not a tank driver or something well from from that size I wanted to be in the army anyway so uh, I was army fanatic from from I can remember and um, the uh, the intake for Irish Guards obviously are Ireland um, and a lot of Liverpool uh, filtered into that because of the Irish connection. Uh. Um, they, I went down with um, my dad to Stillington Street in Liverpool, mm -hmm. and they just happened to be a chap there who was an Irish guardsman. Um, right. Um, and he was uh, he was the recruiting sergeant at that time. Um, and it just so happened that um, with a name like Mulvaney, um, 
uh, it, it's obviously Irish, so, and he was there, and I just happened to go, yeah, Irish guard suits and sounds okay, so um, I didn't know too much about, it was either that or Irish suit regiment or um, Marines or something like that, you know, the fancy ones, but um, I ended up going for that anyway, so, and uh, I thoroughly enjoyed it, to be honest, I really did. We, I've got my family is very much a services family, um, army and navy. And um, when I was when I was little, I was the only girl in the boys' army cadet in the whole of the UK, and uh, it was great fun. And I, but I wanted to either be infantry because I was a crack shot, I wanted to be infantry, or I wanted to be a tank driver. And in at the time, they didn't allow women to do either of those things, and so oh, I went no. not joining the army then. <laughs> I think I think we've moved on a bit since then, haven't we? <laughs> well, when I, when, I, when I first wanted to join, I didn't know what I wanted to join. I just wanted to be in the army. Uh-huh. Um, so I let I joined what what was then called there was two um, sections called the junior army and the junior leaders, and they took um, lads from twelve um, from sixteen. And you did 12 months training before you become a a, a proper soldier, if you like. Uh-huh. Um, so it was like straight from school into the army for me. And did, did you do like any school work at that time? No, 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 no. You 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 went down to a place called uh, Purbright in Guildford. Oh, yeah, no, Purbright. Um, and we were just lobbed in there. At that time, there was, um, it, that was a guards depot. I think it's changed now since to an infantry um, depot, but it, it was a purely guard. So you'd have um, the household regiments in, which is what we used to call them, the guards regiments. We'd have them um, all bringing in the new cannon fodder, if you like, um, from the junior side. Mm-hmm. Um, and then we did 12 months there. And then uh, the Irish guards happened to be in Germany in a place called Munster when, Mm-hmm. Um, I'd left the um, the depot um, and we got shipped over to Munster to join the regiment. Wow. Because uh, I know my brother joined in, back, back in the day, my brother's older than me and he joined um, he, he joined the Navy and he did sea school. I think he joined, he was either 14 or 15. I was a baby at the time. And, <laughs> They, they started them with sea school and they used to do a lot of the, the schooling education on the ship as well while the war. Uh, right, the war. Okay. And so I didn't know if they did that with the army as well. Well, we didn't. It was just getting there and soldier, 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 really. It was a lot of running about and a lot of um, polish and spit and um, a lot more running about. I, I thoroughly enjoyed that bit. It was, um, it was very comfortable for me. I didn't mind doing all that. Did you have an interest in dogs back then, or did you have a family dog? No, or? no, the interest in dogs only started when I got my problem dog. Um, after the prison service, or just after the, the or, or as I was leaving the prison service. So. Okay, how long, how long were you in the prison service for? Well, I left the army, I did then three years in, in Civvy Street, uh-huh. um, just working in a normal factory. I was actually making barbed wire instead of cutting it. Um, and then um, a mate of mine said, um, you, it was actually at one of my child's christenings. Um, a mate of mine said, I think you need to look at this job because they're taking ex squaddies in. Um, there's a discipline aspect and it, it'll probably be right up your street. And that was just before 91. Um, Again, they had to do background checks, et cetera, et cetera. And um, uh, I got in January, I think, 91, um, in the prison service. And I spent 22 years there. My first posting was down at Aylesbury, um, a long-term young offenders. Um, and then after, I think it was about two and a half years, I moved up to um, Preston and, okay. uh, and did it 14 and a half years there. So. And you're, you're based around that area, aren't you? I'm actually in Wigan. Uh, well, I'm actually I'm, I'm in between Junction 26, 27 on the M6. It's it's Shevington, so it's just um, never east of east of Wigan, really. So um, it's just five minutes away, ten minutes away. So. Great location for people to turn up with their dogs. 
yeah, it's quite handy actually. I've <laughs> got to say, it's it, it's quite handy. So, what was it's your useful. first dog then? What was breed and in terms well, of the, the well, I, I I had bulldogs for a while. Really? Um, yeah, I I I'd had um, pro proper bulldogs for a while because um, Ali um, has a relative who is. Um, into the breeding, etc., etc. We've we've had them for a number of years, but me first, I, I mean they're uh, they're archetypical lazy man's dog, aren't they? They they are what they are. Um, when the breed specifics of them was was fairly iffy, um, we we'd had them for a long time. Um, it must have been about fifteen years actually. Uh -huh. um, my first real dog, I call him a real dog, um, was Bill, who was a, a Hungarian wide air Vizsla. Um, and it, I got him just before I left the prison service. When I say I got him, my son got him really. He was doing, um, uh, he was working at my school college doing um, some uh, land management course and he wanted a dog um, and he chose a Vizsla um, and that was Bill. Uh, bless his cotton socks and he was the he, he's probably the cause of me going into um, dog training he was very very affectionate with people um, he got attacked a couple of times and um, he then become a, a, a real handful a, a quite a problem dog with other dogs with humans he was absolutely adorable but, but with, with um, dogs he was a major problem um how, how uh, old was he when he started yeah. gary how long how to say that again sorry? how old was bill when he started getting a bit on his toes with other dogs oh he's fairly young um he was hmm, i think it was about um i'm thinking probably about 14 months maybe younger okay. um we were doing fairly don't forget, we we you, we'd done the research, we we done all the study, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But the Vizslas are a fantastic breed, but they are a handful. Mm -hmm. Then um, uh, the genetic pool was a bit strained then, um, and he had associated problems, physical as well as um, uh, the aggression with other dogs. Um, and he was, yeah, I think it was about 40 months. I may be three months either side of that. Um, because he got attacked once when I was with him and then he got attacked once when I wasn't with him. Oh. Um, and he, he, he really struggled then. Um, and I was having trouble finding help, basically. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I decided to do it myself. That's a short version. I decided to do it myself. So I did a, 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 a started doing a number of studies because I knew his behaviour wasn't aggression. Didn't know it then. I knew the aggressive tendencies he was showing wasn't his fault. That's the better way to to yeah. say it. Um, I knew he he thought he had a problem. Um, we used to call him the special one anyway. So, uh, and he was, he, he, he was um, emotionally very um, vulnerable, I think, um, yeah, because yeah. of it. Um, yeah, he was the one that got me, uh, he, he died early, bless his cotton socks. He died of an undiagnosed condition, but um, he died at five. So I'd just got him okay before he, he, he passed away, bless him. Mm. I think he'll always be the one that's, under here rather than um he, he, he was a special dog I, I i know what you mean and and the at that age they can really lose their confidence can't they and you, you know i mean dante my labrador is quite a strong i mean he's a very strong dog and when we moved to scotland there's a guy with a grey and and he um this dog is that as you approach him he kind of comes he trots along beside his own and then at the last minute he swerves out and runs at the dog barking and then swerves past the dog and and he did that a couple of times to Dante and Dante started really getting on his toes and and I can't have that. He's a big black Labrador 
yeah. like Ziggy, very emotional, hackles up and down like a blooming yo-yo, you know, as soon as he gets excited, yeah. boom, up go the hackles. And um, and he was starting to get on his toes. And and this dog really rocked his confidence in relation to the dogs, you know. It's so yeah, easy to happen, he, isn't it? Yeah, he was he was he was struggling, he was struggling a lot. And we we as basic dog owners, although you like I said, you do the study, you do the but, but you you just don't cope with that. Um and it it was it was heartbreaking really. He was he because he could get under your skin as well. I mean he was a beautiful natured dog. So um, and it, he was very uncomfortable, very uncomfortable. And to watch it was heartbreaking really. It was it was very uncomfortable. Mm. Um, but it looked like aggression. You know, it's normally people, it's, it's yeah, normally it's lacking confidence. It's like, oh my god, so I don't know what's going to happen. Yeah, I, I I used to describe, or I still describe it when I'm dealing with clients. I still describe it as as the kill or be killed mode. Um, he was that bad. So uh, um, and we needed to do something about it. Yeah. Um, and we we were looking at studies. We were looking at um, anything on the internet, and I, I quickly realised there's there's not a, there's not a fix all. You, yeah. You've got to take really bits of information. So I then thought I need to do something myself. I, I, I can't. I mean, it, it was a problem for him, but it changed my life. He changed my life really. He, he, he made it. He made it better. I've got to say, even before that incident, and even after it, he was my because um, I was working in the prison service then. Mm -hmm. Because you deal with the dog in front of you, the great stress relieves, the great, I, I mean, it, it's not a pleasant job, but when you're dealing with him, you, you have to deal with him. You can't, you can't think about anything else. So it was great to get, get, get into him and, 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 and try and get him sorted. So, and I was doing a lot of stuff. I, I ended up doing a lot of study for him. It was about five years worth of yeah. study. That, that was <laughs> Yeah, doing courses all over the place. I don't believe in sticking, you know, hats on one peg. I, I'm quite happy to try um, different all over the place. And it, it, I mean, there's some, our friend Ross McCarthy said to me once, um, "You grab the bits of information that you need mm -hmm. and dump the other bits of information that you don't need." Um, and I thought that was a great, I, I, I met Ross very early in the training. Uh, I don't know him that well, but I met him uh, very, and he impressed me the way that comment was just what I needed at the time, because um, you're worried about where you're going and there's very much positively, negatively, all this. And uh, there's, there's a lot of malarkey going on with that. And, and to get that, yeah, I was actually on a course of this. In fact, in fact, I'm almost convinced you were there. I was, I was I, 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 this, and he would just went because I actually had a book. I know, I remember the book. I can, you were sitting. I actually had a professional book. In, professional instructor skills. You were sitting. <laughs> I was, I was on the left hand side of the room. Ross is on the right hand side of the room. You were sitting on the desk immediately in front of me. <laughs> on that chair. That's right. When the like podium, Ross, yeah. Ross came in and he looked at the book and he just raised his eyebrows at me and and you know glanced at the book and I went, interesting. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's, that, that, that was, was deliberate, by the way. That was deliberate. I just put the book on the top because I've only, I'd only just bought it. I'd actually been reading it, thinking, mm, yeah, we need to look at this a bit more because this doesn't make sense. Um, and and when he popped over and went hello and then we had that discussion that was fun for me that he couldn't have said anything better it was like yes that, that that and i often use that comment for other people take the information you need even the information i give you if you don't use it bin it if you do grab it yeah uh, and that's fantastic I won't, i'll never forget that i don't think it was it was great and and the more the more you learn and the more courses you go on, the less you learn, if that makes sense. So it comes to the point where you go on a course when you're really early on in your career 
and you do a two day course, you're like, you're like, Oh my God, and you're just absorbing everything and you're making loads and loads of notes. And then after a few years, you're lucky if you get like five new things. And then after 10 years, you're lucky yeah. if you come away with one thing and then you're attending the course and you're going, well, I wouldn't do that. And I wouldn't do that. And I wouldn't do that. And, yeah. and it's really, you, you know, as you're finding your true north, I always call it your true north. Yeah. You know, I was lucky. I found my true north really early on. Um, you, you, the more courses you do, the less you come away with. Yeah, well, yeah, def yeah, definitely, definitely. And so the more courses you do, you have to be more selective about what courses you're going to pay for. Um, yeah. Well, yeah. it costs in the end. I mean, I was lucky enough to use some of my redundancy money um, to, 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 to do all them courses. And I actually, I think I went to Crufts, um twice and checked the various stands and, and, and got the information from there. And I did um, very much three years, definitely under under the learning, learning, learning umbrella. Um, and then it started slacking enough. And now probably I'd be very selective um, at, at where I go now anyway. So um, purely and simply because I'm in the position I'm in and I'm comfortable in the position I'm in, um, you're never truly comfortable with, 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 you're always worrying whether you're doing the right thing, et cetera, et cetera. I am. Um, but I'm, I'm, I think I've, I've, I've done enough. The people I've learned from, I've taken really great bits of information from. Mm -hmm. I, I've got to say, I'm in a, I'm, I, I'm, I'm privileged to, to, to do what I do. And I'm, I'm, Generally, can't believe people are paying me for this thing. But <laughs> it's I great seem to be good at it, so I, I, I can't. I enjoy it, and, and that's the. That, if, if I'd have done this ten years ago, I'd probably live ten years more now. But um, <laughs> if I'd have done it ten years ago, I'd have been happy as a pig in uh, mock at the moment. So I, I, every day is a blessing for me. So I can't. That I was looking so to cool. get to get out of the job that I. I grew to, you know, be uncomfortable with um, because it was affecting me, not because of the job. The people in it were great, but um, because it was affecting me. And I was lucky enough to grab the redundancy stuff and, and, and use that to help me. So Change your direction. It's amazing. Um, I mean, I, I feel really blessed doing the job that I do. I'm, I have to say, though, after 10 years on the training field, I'm very grateful I'm not standing in the middle of a field in the middle of winter in Scotland, you know. <laughs> it's like it was bad enough doing it in Marlborough. So, especially I'm this weekend, by the way. This weekend just gone. <laughs> especially we had all sorts of weather this weekend. It was the first time that <laughs> we had all sorts of weather this weekend. It was, it was, we had heat, we had thunderstorms. We had, everyone loved it because we'd been, we'd been isolated for a while. So, uh, yeah, we I must admit, but I, again, being out there for now is 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 great. It's uh, I'm beaming like a Cheshire cat every time, yeah. so I can't I, I can't complain. No, three yeah, three I mean, weeks three three weeks a year with the instructors on the field is enough for me. That's great. Yeah, well, actually, yeah, I can imagine. Yeah, imagine, especially more. I bet you it's flat as well. So the wind and the rain. Yeah. yeah. No, it's good. So, um, after you had, so you didn't really have a choice on what breed you went for. At the minute, I seem to be surrounded by Vizsla people. Hannah keeps trying to get me to get a Vizsla. <laughs> and it's like, no, I don't. I often say to people, do you know what you've got? And you, they look at me going, yeah, of course I know what I've got. I've done the studies where, no, do you really know what you've got? Uh, I, I love the breed. Would I get one at this age now? Probably not, no. Uh, hard work. Um, but he was, he, yeah, I didn't have the choice uh, for him. In fact, not none of the three dogs I've got, I had the choice with. They, they oh, really? They were originally mine. So um, Bill was the first one. Uh -huh. And then I think it was three or four months later, Maureen appeared, uh, who's another... Um, Hungarian wide Vizsla, but she's a fluffy version. Uh -huh. And then um, I've had, uh, or Alison's had Joan, um, 
for uh, she's five now um so she come along later on um what five years ago and she's a cocker spaniel so uh, we went completely the the opposite um, i didn't direction. realize that joan was ali's dog jo yeah joan was ali's dog initially she might have signed her over to me now but um initially yeah joan was ali's dog but, um bill was ethan's uh joan I think Maureen, I think, was Ali's originally. Mm -hmm. um, and then Joan, I think, was Ali's originally. Um, and I just got the backlash, really. <laughs> <laughs> well, I love the names of your dogs. I mean, Maureen and Joan, what names? Yeah, Bill, Maureen and Joan. I think that's Ali's um, stitch up for me. Well, how, how bad can I sound when I'm calling me dog, really? <laughs> um, and, and, and that in itself, because I've only got the two of them, it, it's Mo and Joe, so I, I've stitched myself up there because when I'm calling one, the other one thinks because the syllables are fairly close together, Mo Joe, and the other one thinks I'm calling them. So I have to mouth it very carefully instead of using the full name. So I normally point and go you. Um, yeah. than, You'll say the only kinds. Do what I tell you. Don't do what I've done. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Generally, yeah. I was doing that today on the field, actually. Maureen. You, oh, Craigie. Yeah. Um, do you notice the difference between the dog and the bitch of the wirehead fish lads? Well, well, he, he yeah. Yeah, definitely. Um, I, I, I prefer bitches um, in one way and prefer males in the other. Mm -hmm. For me, the ones I've met and the ones I've dealt with, the males, a lot more affectionate, uh -huh. a lot more needy, uh -huh. may potentially, um, and a lot more um, thick in their approach to life, because it's just a game. Whereas females can be a bit standoffish mm -hmm. um, and can be a bit aloof, but are more savvy, more intelligent. Um, the two girls I've got now are, are exactly like that. They can, you know, step back if they want and they can be a bit more smarter than the males. Whereas um, males, if you show them affection, they go goofy. Um, but that was Bill yeah. to a T. Um, Bill got under our skin fairly rapidly. So does the girls, but nothing, nowhere near as, as, as bad as him um, because of his affection, really. He was... Very, very people orientated. Yeah, very people orientated. Quite sad I lost him too early. But, uh, but yeah, and the different breeds are, 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 um, are quite interesting. Would you would do it all again? Probably not. <laughs> <laughs> what breed would you go for? Um, well, I've always said that. Now, this is rather strange. For a retirement dog, if I ever got one, it would be a Border Terrier. Really? That's strange, isn't it? Completely out of the, the, the range. But uh, would I really get one? No. Uh, would I probably get another cocker? Maybe. Yeah. Maybe. Because I, I, I never wanted a, a third dog. Um, but I just happened to be in the passenger seat when we went over to pick her up so I I had her on my lap and within I don't know two hours I was hooked hook line and sinker I think um, my son has just got a Labrador Duke Duke of Boom Ooh, nice. um, and he's uh, around six months um, ish now um, and I absolutely adore him as well but I think really it's just because different switches switch them on and um, and, and he's a male and a Labrador, which I quite I like anyway. Um, yeah, I don't know. Would I get another one again? Probably not. Um, not at this age. But the the the, the We're three. The same age, aren't we? It's what? We're the same age, aren't we? I'm, well, I'm fifty-four. Yeah, we're the same age. Yeah. Uh, don't don't look at me like oh. Oh, uh, you wouldn't get one at this age? Yeah, definitely not. Definitely not. I'm getting a puppy. 
<laughs> oh yeah, definitely. Oh, yeah, what, what, what what flavour? Black Labrador. Oh, nice. I, I've got to say, my son's lab, Duke. I, I, I quite. I'm thinking. Yeah, I, I quite like them. Um, yeah. But I'm trying. I, I'm going to use him as my third dog rather than. Good plan. Get 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 another one that way. I don't have to keep him for life. I can just kick him back to him when I'm fed up. <laughs> <laughs> but he's doing well. He's doing well. He's he's joined the group or groups that have got running at the moment. And he's, is, is he he, he's really, he's with Pudding. Is he in your classes? Is he in your Yeah, uh, which surprised me. He, he, I said, do, do, do you want to do it? Yeah, definitely. I, I really love to do it. Fantastic. And it, he's, uh, my son's fairly laid back anyway. So, and, and the dog's proven to be a really good, um, a really good dog so far. It's all play, obviously, at that age. Um, but he's doing he's doing really well, yeah. And he's he's getting into it. He's he's liking it. I think. I think. You have to ask him. <laughs> That's good. I will. I'll get to Can you give me some feedback on your dad's? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm trying to I'm, I'm trying to take a step back and not take over for obvious reasons. And I'm trying to let him make the decisions that he needs to make within reason. Um, so I'm, 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 it, it's quite difficult for me, but. I, I, yeah, he's, he's doing well. He's doing well, I've got to say. Yeah, I couldn't teach my son, I've got to say. I couldn't I couldn't teach him. Well, well I thought the same, to be fair. Um, and him and his uh, girlfriend have uh, uh, come to the class. Uh-huh. And they're very, um, I mean, they're very quiet and laid back anyway, um, completely the opposite to me. But they're, they're, they're very, um, they're, they're doing well. I, I didn't think he'd, he'd listen, and he's listening. Bless his cotton socks. He's doing what he should be doing. But he, um, well, he appears to be, and that's all I need to. <laughs> but he'll he'll um, say the reward. It's one thing, like listening to your dad and and say if your dad says do this and you do it. But when somebody says do this with your dog and you see the results of it, you kind of hang on to every word then, don't you? Because it's like, oh my god, he said this and this is happening. My dog, my dog's amazing, and that can take him places. That can yeah. get trees and. Well, I was, I am conscious of that because dad first, trainer second, uh-huh. um, which is why I try not to, 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 you know, don't do that, do this, don't do that, do that. And, and, and when he stops, he, he's got a good um, physical signal, me son, he'll just stop and, 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 and look. So therefore I know he wants some feedback rather than me jumping in going, do this, do this. He will, he will start and pause, which is, which is a great indicator for me. So, and he's he, in that particular group. There's about three Labradors, uh-huh. which is unusual for around here. Uh, I'm getting phone calls oh, the next week or so. So there's there's an influx of Labradors come in. So, um, and they the sort of gelling with each other as well, which is nice. Um, I, I always say probably controversially, Spaniels do then think, whereas uh, Labradors think then do. Um, so they have that sort of slight pause first before they all, they'll do anything, whereas Spaniels, you're trying to put the brakes on first before you do anything, whereas they're liable to, to, to slow it down a bit. Mm-hmm. Um, but I'm quite enjoying to seeing the improvement, really. I'm, uh, yeah, Again, it's the job, isn't it? Oh, it's, it, it makes me smile. It's, Sorry. It, it just makes me smile when you see people putting the effort into training the dog, and you see the and you see you, yeah. you see them come on the first day, and the dog and them have got abs- the paws apart. There's absolutely no rapport whatsoever between them and the dog. And at the end of the six weeks, you know, they're looking down at the dog, and the dog's looking up with them, and they're going, "I'm with him," and the guy's looking down, and, "Oh, he's a lovely dog." And, the report, and then you start doing the gun dog stuff, and the bond is just awesome. I mean, I love yeah. it. I do miss. I do miss it. Uh, honestly, when it's nice and sunny, I miss it. I was just about to say that. You don't miss the bloody weather. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, well, I'm sorry. Yeah, I get that. Like, oh, it's raining. Nah, I'll come tomorrow. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, definitely get that. So you don't, you said you don't get many Labradors in your area. What, 
what breed is prevalent in the Wigan area? Oh, Springers. Oh, is it? Are you? Is it a spaniel country? But, well, Springers, and then it's cockapoodle doodle stoodle doodle. <gasps> so there's a lot of them coming through as well. Um, they're they're the the Springers, few cockers. Yeah, it's, it's spaniel country really. Um, at the moment, predominantly Springers. The old cocker um, now Labradors are coming in. Um, retrievers, I've got what gold is? Two, yeah, two or three, three now um, uh, uh, coming in, and there's a flat coat retriever. Okay, um, uh, which was the first one uh, for a while. So um, yeah, it's predominantly uh, spaniels really. And other, because the, the thing that I always find interesting about um, springers and cockers to a degree, but mainly the springers, is the stamp that comes through. Because we went through uh, one stage of having the very solid, very robust liver and white springers. They were really, really common and, and very favoured. You know, I mean, I love the liver yeah. and white spaniels, mm -hmm. which is absolutely stunning dogs. And then there was that run of quite slim, narrow chested, black and white springers with a bit of speckling on them. And now there seems to be lots of really narrow liver and white as well. What, what's the breeding like in the Wigan area? And yeah. then if people are listening, they go, oh, I like the sound of those dogs, they're going to be looking at Wigan for them. So yeah. what, the, what the other? Narrow, narrow, fairly slim, fairly, um, they've got, they've got That's some pits in them, um, which makes them completely, you know, for someone who, who, who doesn't know what they're doing, makes it completely difficult to handle because, yeah. like I said before, I, I'm a firmly believer thing and they, they, they do before they think. So yeah. uh, it, yeah. you, you're having to pull the uh, brakes on a lot. Um, so the, uh, is it, yeah, it's probably liver and white, but the slim built, yeah, they don't seem to be, you know, pack and punch. Followed, followed hunting um, dogs. Yeah, uh, I tell you that the, there's a couple of Columbus oh, yeah. spaniels, um, and they're a bit more solid. The heads a bit fairly big and and clumber like but the the body seems to be a bit slimmed down so yeah but the, they're normally slim built they're normally wired by the way there's the the all over the place mm -hmm. um and it takes them a while to get that you know that mentality to work in ethic and stuff like that so uh yeah it's normally that's the that's the springers anyway Mm -hmm. so when um i'm just gonna backtrack a bit so from we've been talking gun dogs but that's not when you f you first started with dogs did you you do the kennel club good citizen is that right do you teach that yeah. still yeah yeah yes i do a small i only do two classes of of that and that's basic training really um that's in indoors um and that could be any breed Mm -hmm. Any breed that wants to do it um, will will basically do it. Um, I, I only do two classes because that's the minimum I can do. Um, and I do a, a, a puppy class and then the puppies then filter into the, um, the, the senior class, if you like. Um, and it's an ongoing, now it's an ongoing, it's a rolling effect. What I used to do was get puppies move them on to silver and then ones and then get another set and then but now um when i'm contacted i often say there's there's no intake every it's not a quick intake because yeah. I'm a, i now take them from puppy bronze silver and gold and then disperse them um so we've got a a, a continuation of the class and b um everyone knows what they're doing um uh, and they're all heading in the same direction. And then when you get that natural fade off, um, 
the class then thins out and then you can add some more from the bottom class into the top <laughs> class. So it seems to be, seems to, I've only done that the last, um, I don't know, the last three times and it seems to be working better, really. Um, it, 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 saves, it saves me doing a lot more work. I'm very bad at my administration. <laughs> <laughs> um, I try. I try and keep that to a minimum. To be fair, which is good. I mean, the the kennel club do ask for a lot of admin. I know because I used to teach good citizen, and um, I used to do it like you. I used to. I I used to um, start with puppies, and then I would. They would just stay with me in the same class right the way through the gold, and I wouldn't bring people in the class because it it, you know, if you get to the point where you're doing silver. And then you're bringing dogs in, they might, might not be to the same standard as your class. And then you're having to backtrack yeah. and, yeah, you yeah. know, because we always teach ahead of ourselves, don't we? We never, yeah. we, we always teach ahead of ourselves. And so then you bring people in and they're not quite at the same standard. And then it's really just concerning for everybody. And it, it kind of, it doesn't fracture the group, but it makes it a little bit disjointed initially. And then they have to settle yeah. down again and, yeah. Well, I've 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 done a because I only do two classes. I've done a group where it's actually been all three in the same class, and it's oh, wow, okay. It, it it's not yeah, it's not the way to do it really. Um, so I prefer to just take the chunk and get, but because you naturally get that if you start. Um, I I only do it on a small scale as well, deliberately because the all the whole although the hall is 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 a decent size. Um, if you put eight or ten in that hall they're all cramming into they're all bumping into each other mm. and and uh, i normally try and keep it to about six so there's a decent set of space in between everyone obviously pre covid 19 so um and that was that that to me was easy then i can do it myself i didn't need to bring help in uh, yeah. because i can keep an eye on on, on what's going on wow. again I, it, it, it's dog training and I really enjoy it. I, I've got to say I'm leaning towards the outside work rather than the indoor work these days because I, I, I'm, I can be a bit more cheeky, I can be a bit more adventurous, I think. Um, and, it, yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Less odd or not, the better, huh? Yeah. <laughs> So you, your outdoor stuff is all gun dog training, all pet gun dog training, because you are one of the first accredited pet gun dog instructors in the country. Yes, uh, yeah, yeah, it's all the the outside work I do now, um, mostly one to ones. Uh, well, the 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 behaviour stuff is is generally not. I think we've had this conversation before. Is generally not behaviour. When I get the phone call, ninety nine percent of them go. I've got a dog with a behaviour problem. He's aggressive. Blah blah blah. Mm -hmm. And when you drill down to it, it's 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 training. Yeah. Full stop. Yeah. yeah. Um, uh, so most of my um, day to day work is 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 reintroducing that bond, mm -hmm. that communication ethics. So therefore, it's not behaviour work really. Um, it's very rare I do. Um, I, I find a dog that that is a proper behaviour problem and um, it's generally the communication and um, that's my day-to-day -day work and then I s s separate every every fortnight I have my groups I do a, a, a preset number of weeks um, on courses and again it's a rolling program so those that, that are with me I think I've had I've had a group that's been with me since 2013. Bless the cotton socks. They're, they're obviously gluttons for punishment. But they 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 come back, they're, they're my advanced class, and that's only a small group. Um, and that's more of a pleasure yeah. than an instruction because they know what they're doing now. Um, and then we're, we're, we're moving on sort of together. Uh, again, it's, it's less instruction, more work, if you like. Um, yeah. If there is instruction in it um, because we've got certain things to do but yeah most of uh, that's once a fortnight um, I think I've, I've currently released dates up until December the 13th I think so it's it, it, it's as far in advance as I can make it and people will do it um, 
and that's every fortnight. And I try and keep the non-working fortnight. I, I don't do any dog work now Brilliant. on that weekend because it's time for grandkids and, and, and family, really. So, um, because that's I'm really good. I'm, I'm constantly maybe answering calls and stuff, and I am interrupting um, family time. So. Um, I try not to do that when I when I can. Uh, once the phone's down, it's down. That it's very that's awesome because I mean I'm I am a bit of a workaholic. I am always always writing, always doing stuff, and it's really good to hear that you've got that balance in your life because it's so easy when you're self-employed and you know what it's like. You know, when you're self-employed, you have to do your books, you have to do your phone calls, you have to do your reports, you have yeah. to, do, and you have to, but you also have to work and go out and see clients and you don't have somebody doing all the admin you don't have anybody picking things up if you're not well you have to do yeah. it all and it really does encroach I mean I've started writing in my diary now that I only work like work work nine or three and yeah. then if there's anything else that needs to be done then I'll do the admin after that and it's really difficult getting that balance when you're self-employed because you think oh I'll just do this oh I'll just I'll just make a phone call before you know it's nine o'clock at night and yeah. you've your family suffers well it, 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 the um, well I'm lucky enough my kids are my, my kids are in early 30 both of them are in early 30 grandkids come over every so often in normal times obviously um, every so often anyway so and, and that quality time I, I do answer calls and, and at some point my my emails generally I try and do first thing in the morning I'm up at half past five six o'clock every morning anyway but then I go to bed at nine o'clock. Um, if it, if it, if I'm later than that, me 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 eyes drop out. So, um, uh, and and that seems to be the routine. Yeah, I'm, I'm trying to get it more sectioned. Obviously, the current situation has has has, has debunked that anyway. But um, yeah, I try and get me. I try and do all me. Abbott, which probably doesn't please people, by the way, because they've got pinging phones at half past <laughs> five in the morning because I'm, I'm trying to do all the emails and answer them from there. But I'm, I'm fairly bad at the admin, I've got to say. I, I, I try my best, but I'm, I, t and I also try and answer everyone, but um, the occasional one does slip through the net, I've got to say. So. And I mean, in England now, because we're, we're pretty much still well, well locked down in Scotland. We've only, oh, yeah. until today, we've only been on a five mile limit. You can't travel beyond five mile in Scotland. You can now, to, as of today, but they're still recommending the 10 mile limit. But in England, things are, this weekend are going to get a bit hairy when the pub is open, I reckon. Um, yeah. So it's now, I'm just, just as a heads up, this is going to go out round about the end of July, the beginning of August, so we'll know if there's a second wave by then. When people are listening to this, we'll listen to this when it goes out and we'll go, oh, okay, that was the second wave. So how is, yeah. how is it um, in England? Because things are starting to happen. I know a couple of, I know you're back at work now, a couple of the instructors, the um, APGI guys are teaching classes again. How's yeah. it been? Are you are you getting lots and lots of phone calls to say, right, I want to show my dog again? Or yeah, I'm, I'm from from uh, this week in particular. I'm I'm glancing over at the phone. By the way, it's on silent, but it's pinging all over the place. But um, the last two three weeks, certainly, um, the phone's been going um, fairly regularly. Mm -hmm. And don't forget when we're talking, Les, I, I say I work full time, but I work my full time. So, yeah. it, you know, I only do two appointments a day. I should do more, but I don't um, because I get sick of the sound of my own bloody voice. So I don't know about you. So <laughs> I, I've, got to, I, I've got to pull back. So the, the lifestyle choice is, is, is what it is for me. Yes. Um, uh, and that's why, I, that's why I'm grinning like a Cheshire cat, probably. I should be working more, but I don't. Um, Currently, what's ha it seems to be a bit more. We're, we're getting sort of back to normal with question mark. Um, when you walk it, or when you're driving past people, it's it, there's there's no deserted streets anymore. Really it's busy. Um, 
when I go to a client's house, it's either garden or house, take your pick, and they make that dynamic risk assessment as well as me. Um, I've been lucky enough to not any old age pensioners or vulnerable people. Um, I, we just don't we just don't meet. No. Um, I've got the sprays, the masks, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, all that. So the PPE is there for me because I don't use it that much. But um, the the indoor classes are complete no no at the moment, and I, I, and I don't know. I think there's, there's currently we're, we're starting to move on that, but I've, the, them kennel club classes that we were talking about before are on pause um, and have been since since lockdown started. Mm -hmm. and, and there's no sign of moving on them yet. Mm -hmm. That will probably alter in the next two, three weeks. Um, but I only do it on a small scale, so I can probably manage that because mm -hmm. um, the space in the hall is big enough probably to house them. Um, the outdoor classes only started last week. And we tend to, well, I'm lucky enough to train where I train, um, and we tend to keep a fairly decent distance anyway. Um, but it was emphasised because I'd, I'd, I'd marked the area um, with with small pegs um, and said, so just, just Man, want to keep your dogs in the car for now. Let's have a chat. All stand by your cars. So there is a fairly um, decent distance. A funnel them through a specific area, and then we were able to. I, I'd already marked out the area just to stand, and it it, it went really really well um, because people were quite obviously, um, you know, man. It just means I had to shout a bit more, which is no big deal. Um, I've got a big mouth anyway, so <laughs> and, and they seem to enjoy it. Apart from the thunderstorms, rain, hot weather, blah blah blah, <laughs> mix was getting, um, and and it was just enough again, just enough clients not to make it too overbearing for them. Yeah, I did say if anyone felt comfortable, and I have had a couple of clients that said, "Do you mind if we don't come until we feel more comfortable?" Yeah, brilliant. If you're feeling uncomfortable, don't turn up. Mm -hmm. Because at the end of the day, it's only within the grand scheme of things, it's only dog training. Yeah, um, and we've got to put that into perspective, haven't we? So definitely. Um, so there's a couple of clients that have said, "Can we join later on?" Yeah, when you feel comfortable joining, and I'm, and I'm quite happy with that, really. So, what mask are you wearing, Gary? Are you wearing like the face mask, or are you wearing the visor? No, the face mask. Um, if I'm wearing one outside, I don't. I don't need to um, because of the distance I'm, I'm at. We don't get close enough. No. Um, uh, the the in England, it's only it's just changed this week, by the way. But oh, um, in in um, vehicles or in buses, public transport, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, they advise you to wear them. Um, but outside, uh, there's no need. Um, because the distance is that great anyway so yeah i mean and, and i mean we would naturally keep the distance in classes anyway because we don't want the dogs overlapping or you know we yeah. let keep that distance so that we're not imposing energy on dogs which is really important so yeah we, we, i mean the way we train is 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 like that anyway we yeah. perhaps could have got back uh, a bit earlier but it it is what it it was what it was and i think a lot of people well, because for, for, for me, um, and I often said people, I got um, a lot of phone calls saying, we're panicking about dog socialisation, which drives me absolutely nuts. We were in the perfect opportunity to cement that bond and get that dog focusing on you and then slowly introduce the noise, the sound, the movement. The, and... and People automatically say socialization, let's get them out and let's get them mother and each other dogs. And, and that's not what socialization is. Absolutely drives me nuts. I, I, I pinched a, a, a photograph, I don't know whether you've seen it on my Facebook, I pinched a photograph with a, two circles, what people think yes, socialization I'm is. And what that's been going around for a while, I think. And I just put it on thinking that will answer the people that have called me over the last month or so. Um, 
well, when we got back to training um, that last weekend, I did say to people, it's basics. Stop panicking because <laughs> we had a lot of phone calls. Can we do a one to one? I'm really, uh, I don't want to be left behind, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Yeah. So just stop panicking. And it's all we did was lead weight games and bonding. Um, <laughs> and it was just let's get us used to this this scenario first, and let's see what happens, and let's go from there. So it's about just 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 making you know getting back to normality anyway. Um, I, I know it's gundo classes, but I, I split the gundo classes into uh, right. Let's if we if we've got this behaviour happening, let's deal with that first, uh, and then let's go. So I think they get great value for the lessons, by the way. So <laughs> it's not just gundo classes. So if you're thinking it's, of doing. So if you want to join your pet gun dog training, really good value for money, go and see Gary Mulvaney dog yeah, training. Gary, Gary. Yeah, quick <laughs> advertisement there. <laughs> quick advertisement there. <laughs> but, it, but I thought it's about, you know, we are training pet gun dogs. Yeah, they might go yeah. shooting. And if they do go shooting, if they're lucky, they'll be going out 20 days over the season. If they're really yeah. lucky, that's a, a heavy season, 20 days. And the rest of the time we've got to deal with getting them to go on the bed, not counter surfing, yeah. not barking, not jumping off, um, not running away, not rolling in poo, not and that's that's a big part of doing pet gun dog training. It's making sure that you've got a dog that you can live with and that you can take to the pub and still go off beating or picking up with. Yeah, I, could, I, 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 I use that analogy all the time. Let, let, uh, uh, what I'm probably your archetypical pet gun dog owner. Yeah. I am. Yeah. Mine don't go shooting, not because I've got any moral objection or, or, or anything. I don't have time. Mine will probably run through birds these days to pick up dummies. <laughs> Fantastic. Um, because I won't get into that scenario, not because I don't want to, just because I, I don't do it on my day-to-day -day thing. So I'm probably your archetypical pet gun dog owner yeah. which is what I'm dealing with yeah. here yeah. I think uh, I must have six classes running at the moment and I think maybe one of them definitely does go shooting he goes rough shooting with his Labrador um, one and maybe two have mentioned maybe wanting to go shooting the rest just want that will they walk nicely on the lead Yes. Will we stop at a distance, turn around, sit down and look at you when you use a whistle? Yes. And will they come back when called, irrespective of what's happening? Mm -hmm. Once they've got them three things, and will they go under a table while you're having a pint or something to eat when we're allowed? Yes. Um, and, and that's what they want, really. Yeah. The rest is just a bonus, isn't it? It, it's is. Just... it, it, it is. And... One of you, you know that we've just accredited more instructors uh, this week, which is fantastic. Yes, <laughs> Yay! <laughs> You'll get to meet them next week. And we've got the call together. Um, but one of them, you know, she's a really experienced dog trainer. And she's been trying, I'm not going to say who it is or what club it is. No, I'm not. I'm not going to do that. That would be mean. But she, she's been helping a club, a, a, a dog training club, for about five years. She's got, she's got gun dogs. And will she go shooting? Yes, yeah, she will, because she's going to go picking up this year, um, this season. She's going to go beating this season as well. Um, but she's a classic gun dog, pet gun dog owner. You know, she she's uh, she's got a couple of kids. She um, she really enjoys training her dog. She enjoys doing things with the dog. She gets out. She throws dummies for it, and so on. You know, and and she wants to have a really well mannered dog that she can have fun with. That always that's respectful towards our children, and that shouldn't take anyway. And the woman who runs the training club got very bitchy with her and said, "Well, you can't be a gun dog trainer because you don't go shooting." How narrow-minded is that? You know, the the gun dog is the most popular breed in Britain. It has been for years. Labrador constantly at the top. I think it's I think last year it was a Labrador French Bulldog, Cocker. And then I think the Goldie was fifth. So, you know, we've got like gun dog, gun dog, gun dog all the way through. 
Yeah. And because we're bringing continental dogs in now, you know, the Vigla is very, very um, popular, unfortunately. Not because of the, not because it's not a nice dog, but I always panic when dogs become really trendy and popular because it absolutely wrecks the breeding of them. Um, so we've got all of these gun dogs out there that need their energy channeled. And if you can, if you've got a pet gun dog, and whether you're going to work them or not, um, but if they're primarily pets, then you need to go to somebody who understands pet mentality, who understands what it's like to train a dog in the house rather than a dog that's sitting in kennels or that is only a working beast. You know, we need, we need to understand the fact that you're up against the children, you're up against the telly, you're up against the smells of cooking, you're up against leaving stuff on the stairs. You're up against dogs stealing remotes off the off off the chair, you know, and um, that's under your feet when you're cooking. We you, you need to go to somebody who understands the whole philosophy and psychology of a pet, and who knows how to train them from an instinctive perspective to be able to satisfy their needs for hunting, satisfy their needs for retrieving, and that way you end up with a lovely rounder dog but also it means you go into a trainer who you can say you know what the dog humped the vicar the other day when he came for tea and they can help you with it yeah. and then they can teach you how to get a lovely delivery to hand as well and so when I found this out I was really cross I had to I had to bite my tongue and keep my fingers off the keyboard because I wanted to say something to this lady um, she'll, she'll eat her words because this, this instructor is a good instructor and she'll train some fantastic people to have some amazing dogs so i i do get a bit but you you're dead right you know you, you go to you for a class and as well as doing the gun dog stuff you help them with all of the pet stuff that they've got going on as well well apart, sorry i'll get off my high horse now no, apart from, I'm, I'm, apart, apart from being great value for money <laughs> Yeah, you um, really dog trainer. It it's, it's it's interesting, isn't it? It's interesting, and the problem I have more often than not is trying to shut up when I'm when when, when we're getting in in, in into that moment. Well, as you can see, I'm I'm, I'm quite. I'm, I mean, I love what I do, so there's there's nothing. What do you do? Oh, I'm a dog trainer. I can't believe people are paying me for it. Don't tell <laughs> anyone, but but I, I, it's it's what I do. Um, and it's it, it's something I appear to be good at. So therefore, um, wh whoever's interacting is getting good value. I'm, I'm not saying that just to be funny now. I'm saying because there's yeah. an interest there, because I've owned difficult dogs and I've owned dogs that, that have been a problem, mm -hmm. it... it it is what it is. I make mistakes, same as anyone else. But um, it, it, the the training is what it is. It's 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 life skills, basically, isn't it? So yeah, yeah, yeah. Most mo most of the people that come and are are you 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 archetypical pet gun dog owners, and they just want a bit of peace in between running around like headless chickens on the field. Um, and that's for me that that works wonders. Once we've got a dog that's settled and quiet indoors, mm -hmm. then you can get your odd cuddle and, and and odd relax, and then it's not a problem when you go out. Then you can control. Don't forget, I I I've trained because one's ten and one's five, so I've trained one the wrong way and I've trained one the right way. And actual fact, I use Maureen as a demo of how not to train. And Joan as the demo how to train, uh, and and that's how uh, uh, some some because uh, there's some specific things that Maureen will still do, and some specific mm -hmm. things which Maureen uh, Joan will do now. Mm -hmm. I often show also show them with both a demonstration of play 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 stop formal retrieve mm -hmm. as quick as that. And um, once people see that. They, they understand the mentality fairly rapidly mm -hmm. um, because you because you can play and not be a problem mm -hmm. and then switch it on if you need it which brings into the uh, the effect the immediate recall 
the immediate stop or the emergency stop, call it whatever you want, the down, um, the come to you, sits day, and the heel work. So it, it all has a knock on effect on our domestic, what we do domestically, doesn't it? So. Definitely. And um, and the thing is, when when you're training gun dog right now, and the, the way that we train, you know, the way that we train is we do a lot of it through playing. We, we get that. Um, the motivation and we switch on almost switch on the predatory aggression and then switch it off like that and so to be able to get a dog's adrenaline pump in that high and then be able to go okay stop I want you to do this now that is a great bit of training and it's a great bit of training for anybody regardless of what you do but more so for you you know dogs that you're out walking you want to be able to stop them immediately on a rabbit you want to be able to stop them on a deer on a pheasant yeah. if you're going to go shooting with them and um it's it's invaluable you, you know it's not it's not all about the shooting field it's about being able to stop your dog you know running running across the road after a cat you know it's all of those things as well yeah and for the humans it gives them an hour or an hour and a half or two and a half hours as i use how long are your lessons gary well mine's two what two. what i used to do is do a Forty five minutes or, or, or fifty minutes mm -hmm. and then put the dogs away, all gather around and have a, a mick take or a cup of tea and a biscuit or a cake and then get the dogs out and immediately go out and finish the session off. But now it's it, it, we just Can't go straight it. through now, which which people seem to be a bit miffed at by the way, but um, because they don't get a good gas halfway through. But, uh, I find that break is 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 um, is quite it's needed really a we give the dogs a break and b people will ask them questions or or just chat bubbles for 10 minutes and then switch them back on again. So, sorry well. i thought you finished could they not bring their own flasks but uh, they do they, they did this time i think we we got carried away for the first two or three and we just went straight through i did ask them if they wanted a break but the second lot said no we'll, we will have a break because we've all brought our little drinks because i did say bring your drinks um um and uh, and we we were able to have a chat but the, the the day after i think we did similar two of the classes just went as per normal and then one of them said no we'll have a we'll, we'll have a break as well because they wanted to ask a, a fair few questions and the, the the last class i did on Sunday, maybe in saturday afternoon was a brand new class that should have started on the um first of april really um and i do a whatsapp group for each each group as well um so they, they have a they, they have a they go they go onto my facebook page and if they if they're doing training with me they go onto my facebook group yeah uh, and that's only been instigated really because of the um, COVID-19 situation um, if they're not doing training they may apply but they won't get on yeah. because yeah. they're not training with me so um, and then each group has a WhatsApp group because it's easier to say right we're moving the venue here or we're not going we're not doing the venue over the WhatsApp than it is any other medium really it's just a uh, and then what we can do is we can do a bit of homework in either any of them groups individually as well. So um, why I need a video of play or I need a video of a recall. So, um, and then it's, it's, it's individualized. It, it seems to me, I don't know why I did it, but it seems to make it a bit more, yeah, this is our group. Um, it, it's real bonding, isn't it? It's, it's yeah, a real, it's, it's a real yeah, it's tribe effect. I mean, I'm, I mean, I've, I've, my, the APGI has changed a lot since you did it. Because since you did it, I've become a firewalk instructor and an empowerment coach. And we do things like breaking arrows and boards and glass walking and all of those really exciting things, which you can do when we do the CPD if you like. Um, but it's a real tribe, isn't it? You, you, you bond as a tribe. And it's like, I'm Gary's, I don't know, Wednesday, 10 o'clock tribe. And I'm Gary's Friday afternoon tribe. And then, if you, if you do get them together as a scurry, which is what I used to do with my tribes, they would all come together for the scurry. And initially they would all be in their little groups and then they would kind of yeah. say hello, but then they would come back to their own groups again. And yeah. it's lovely. And 
I think last summer we, we, we did that with a, a few walks. Now, the walks are, are primary just to get everyone together and just go for a walk. And uh -huh. um, the only training we did initially was getting everyone in a circle and getting the dogs to weave in and out so to get sight, sound, smell of each each other's dog. And then we just go for a walk, have a chat, bounce That's off great. different people. And very quickly, the, the groups, it, exactly the same. The group stayed in the little groups and then all of a sudden they started mingling and swapping and it was quite nice. I missed that this year really because we were going to do that again this is only locally um i think a couple of times we had 12 to 15 dogs wow. just um walking in a group and it's only a very short walk but it was it seemed to do the trick mm -hmm. we also try and get together at least once a year to have a few drinks and a, a bit of a chat so um, but again we've we've missed out this year we're gonna have to leave it till um, next year probably well hopefully by christmas we'll be able to get because, I mean, we still need to get together as a group. And my instructors I had to put off. They were due up in May, and they still haven't had their first workshop yet. Oh, right. Oh, God. I know that, that yeah. big bonding, that first big bonding, everybody getting drunk workshop, it hasn't happened yet. Is this the new, the new set? Guys, I started in Oh, January. right. Oh, oh, wow. I know. So they haven't done one yet? Nope. So oh. we, I, did, I did two days over Zoom with them and did like the anatomy and physiology you know a lot of the classroom stuff i did and yeah. then the plan is to come up at the end of august so they haven't had that sitting in the bar late at night bonding yet no idea what you're talking about there <laughs> <laughs> yeah right <laughs> i i every day everyone got a little bit blacker under the eyes yeah. <laughs> yeah, a little bit, a little bit more coffee being consumed in the morning. Well, <laughs> that that for me, that personal touch, it, it is second to none. I, I, I'm I'm not a fan. I've got to say, I'm not a fan of all this Zoom malarkey or this this uh, um, over the net because you don't you, you don't get the same feeling. I, I get it. I understand why we're doing it, but um, it's it's not the same as that interaction because the 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 pauses are sometimes sometimes um masked by what physically you're doing and and, and stuff like that so it's it, it's very um i prefer the, the the personal touch i did a few i only did um three or four i think um zoom consultations when we we're in the lockdown and i just i didn't like them at all i just had to say yeah wait just just wait put the pause button on um, although I, I did them and they appeared to be okay, I didn't get that feeling uh, that I should do. And that, for me, it's all about good feeling anyway. But it's, it's, again, it comes back down to rapport, doesn't it? I mean, you can't see, I'm talking to you and my hands are moving around and you can't see them. <laughs> well, I keep trying to put mine up here. So I know. <laughs> so you can see I'm moving because my ears are doing this, you know. <laughs> you can't actually see I'm, I'm, you know, we express so much of our expressions with our hands yeah. and you can't see them and, you know, body language and body position. You know, is, is she turned away from me? Are our legs crossed at the angle? Is she relaxed? Is she tense? You miss all of that on Zoom, you know, unless I sat right at the other end of the office. Watching um, the whole body. <laughs> whole picture. When I did it on Zoom, I actually had three angles I had on my big camera. And then I had my couch up with my big dog skeleton and everything on. And then I had um, my laptop at the end of that and I had my phone. So you could actually see three different angles when I was teaching. But it, it, was, it wasn't the same. You know, I couldn't do my silly walks and stuff like that, you know. And you can't say yeah. to somebody, here, have a feel of that piece of equipment, you know, see what that feels like. Yeah. Not the same. So I'm um, fingers crossed, you know, that we, we get everybody together in August. Do you think that's going to happen? I hope so. I, ho I mean, I hope so. Um, the Crutherlands will be there, so I, you know, I'm hoping... The, the way things are at the minute, you know, Scotland's doing really well over COVID and England, the border, the, the Cumbria border, it's, it's broken out there. Um, All right, is it? Yeah, I mean, Scotland's had no deaths 
for a few days and we the, I put a map up and we like pale yellow which means it's like 95 in every hundred or is it every thousand I can't remember um whereas Cumbria has amber then there's parts of the UK there's parts of England that's red Scotland's pretty much we're pretty on the ball and so it depends on what happens if there's a big breakout in England and Scotland's clear then you, you know you might not be able to travel to Scotland I, I don't I'm, I, everything's up there we just have to do the best we can do don't we and adapt my favorite word as an instructor we just have to adapt yeah yeah have to definitely adapt. Mm. Gary I can't believe I've just caught a glimpse of the clock we've been talking for ages it's been so good talking to you <laughs> it's just it's just gone it's, it's, zoomed. <laughs> oh it's just zoomed by <laughs> zoomed yes. by on zoom it's been such a pleasure i'm going to say to you prop goodbye to you probably in a second i'm going to end the podcast and stop the recording but it's i'm so glad you came on it's been such a pleasure i've been trying to get you on for ages yeah, no, I've enjoyed that. It's been really nice. I'm, I'm, I'm glad you're thinking of stopping, by the way, because I think my dogs are crossing, crossing I, the legs now. I can see, I can see a little nose going. <laughs> He's bobbing up, going, please let me, let me go. Can that Geordie woman not shut up? Harry, <laughs> <laughs> it's been an absolute pleasure. Well, great to talk to you, and um, I hope you can use the material basically oh definitely it's just going to go out as it is i just say hello at the beginning and then that's it done but it's been a joy thank you so much for coming on yeah and enjoy will you come back when it's all the other end of covid and have a chat and see what's happening yeah when everything's sensible yes bye bye, bye.